Hi guys! So today I wanted to make a story time kind of talking about how we had came to a diagnosis of another rare condition that I do have. Um, I kind of want to talk about my history with these health problems and then how we actually eventually found out what it was. So I have a congenital sucrase and somatase deficiency. Pretty sure I pronounced that third word wrong, but whatever. So basically my body uh, lacks the enzyme to break down sugar and starch. Um, sugar is the worst for me. Um, my doctor has seen it twice before me in her 20 years of practicing. I have a hair on my nose. In her 20 years of practicing and I'm the third case. And I am the worst case she's ever seen. I basically have zero enzymes in my body for sugar and starch. Like, zero. So, there's that. And it is congenital, so that means it's from birth. So, I found out about it a year ago. Um, I, was tw um, I was 22 a year ago. So, we didn't know for 22 years of my life that I had this issue. So... Let's go ahead and now we'll go back in time and kind of talk about how we got to that point. So a couple years ago, probably like four or five years ago, I ended up getting really, really, really sick. Um, I had all of the gastric issues you could possibly think of. Plus I was throwing up all the time, all the time. Um, like, and I had no, I had no control over it either. So I, like, I throw up myself. Um, I always made a joke to the college that I live by that I went to. And was like, every bush you've seen, I've thrown up in it. Um, I used to make that joke and everyone's like, okay. It got to a point where people thought I was bulimic because I was throwing up so much. Um, but no. And then I went to my doctor and we had like colonoscopy, colonoscopies, endoscopies, biopsies of the stomach. Um, all these CAT scans, MRIs, a bunch of stuff where they watch everything go through your intestines. I had my gallbladder scanned, my liver scanned, everything. And they found nothing. So, I just got a message. So, um, so I was a vegetarian for six years. Um, at that time, that was like my six. That was like my year six of being a vegetarian. So I kept getting sicker and sicker and sicker, and my brain was like, "Okay, I'm gonna try and eat meat again." I hated it. I didn't want to, but magically, I ate meat, and my symptoms went away. So you know, I never thought too much of it. I just thought, "Oh, my body was. I didn't get enough nutrition." That's why I was sick. I still had like IBS symptoms, but I was like, yeah, that's just like, I probably just have IBS, you know, and I was lacking the protein I need or whatever. Um, so years go by, fast forward to this past year, which is 2019. Um, I started having the IBS symptoms worse and worse and worse. And it was more frequent. Um, and I would get like the world's like, I would get like stomach spasms. I still do. I get like stomach spasms. Um, it's terrible. It hurts. Um, I get stomach cramping and the spasms. Someone happens at the same time. It's not very fun. Um, and nausea. Luckily, I have not been throwing up, uh, this time around. I've just been very nauseous uh, once in a while. Uh, nausea kind of goes down. But basically, I came back to the doctor, the same doctor, and I was kind of like, I'm back. It's happening again. What's going on? So from there on, we went again uh, straight to an endoscopy um, where she took a biopsy of my stomach uh, lining. I ended up having gastritis. So in 
I had gastritis due to an H. pylori infection. Um, and it was a very bad H. pylori infection. So they don't necessarily know how long I had it or how I got it. Um, it just kind of happened. Like H. pylori is naturally occurring in your stomach. It's just when it overgrows is when it becomes a problem. So they thought, treat that and you'll be fine. Nope. So we treated it, it's gone. Um, and I'm not okay still. So then we started going through more CAT scans, more MRIs, more ultrasounds, everything that you could think of just to try and figure out a name for something because I have all the symptoms of Crohn's disease, but my markers and my blood that would say I have Crohn's are normal, but they're on the high side of normal. That's almost always been my issue with almost every sort of disease that my numbers that they use to measure if you have the disease or not, mine are almost always normal, but high. So they're not high enough to be like, hey, you have this disease. So we were going through all of this and my doctor kind of was like, she looked at me for a second and she was like, have you ever done this test before? And I was like, no. And she told me, she like gave me this box. She was like, take it home. Um, Cause it's through like a separate company and not through like doctor's offices. She said, take this kit home, mail it back, and then we'll have your answers. So I was like, okay. I kind of put it off because I thought none of these tests show are showing anything. None of these tests are doing anything. I'm just going to have to suffer and live like this for my entire life. Um, and then test came back and my doctor called me instantly. Um, and it wasn't the nurse. It was my doctor. And I don't know if you've ever been in any situations with health, but when your doctor calls you to tell us, and tells you you need to come in, that's a sign of a problem. So I went in to the doctor's office and she was like, so what's happening here is you have none of these enzymes. Um, she basically explained all of it. Um, and then was like, and you have to take this specialty medication um, basically in order to get those enzymes so that my body can properly break down what it needs to break down. And the goal of the enzymes is to take it every single time you eat so that you have the enzymes when you're eating. So that they're breaking down stuff when you're eating. But, um, and then, it, then like the goal is to like, when you're taking it so often that you can start like adding sugar and starches back into your diet. That's what I kind of took from that. Like you, you're supposed to cut it out all the, like all the way at first and then gradually add it in while you're continuously taking the medication. And I'm really bad about taking that medication and I really need to. Um, but goes through a specialty pharmacy. So it's like super rare. Um, it has to be refrigerated. Uh, they give you like little like oral syringes in order to measure stuff and take it with you it's it's a lot so yeah she called me she was like this is what you have and uh sadly it really didn't change much um i still have issues gas i still have like gastro issues um pretty obviously I have some pretty bad ones, um, but they are lessened when I take my um, medication for that. Um, so oh, the testing, I'll just talk a little bit about what the test was like. So basically, um, the test was you got like a cup of water and you mix like this weird sugar solution in it and you drank it. And then every like 30 minutes you like breathed in a tube and like like screwed it on and then did a different tube. That was three tubes. And you eat or drink anything during that time. And 
that was how I found it out. But I honestly feel like if I went to a different doctor, I would have never been given that test because it is such a rare thing. Um, cause the likelihood that you have another rare condition, if you have a rare condition already is higher since I have fibrous dysplasia, the risk of me having another condition is higher than somebody who doesn't already have the condition. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of really all there was to say about that. Um, got sick before a meet, got better, started getting sick again. Um... Found out I have the condition. And then here I am now. Uh my status right now is I'm doing having gastro issues. Um I had to get a new gastro doctor because I really wanted a second opinion. And then they kicked me out of the practice, my other job my other doctor, because apparently you can't ask somebody for a second opinion because they say no. And then they don't let you come back to the practice. At least here they do. It's weird. So, I have a new, doc new doctor. He put me on, uh, like, I think it's just an IBS medication. Um, it helps a little bit, but I take Marinol, um, which helps a lot. It's synthetic THC. Um, and it, the problem with that, though, is that it makes me hungry. And what makes my stomach hurt is food. So, uh, it helps with the spasms and the nausea and everything like that. But right now, currently, um, I'm at a different gastro doctor. We're working on my remaining symptoms um, and keeping me on the new, on the new medication. Um, we're also working on keeping my deficiencies, um, not only the sucrase and like insolvency deficiencies, uh, like my vitamin D. Um, we're working on just basically keeping me healthy um instead of necessarily looking for a name but I mean that's what I need in my personal opinion as a name for whatever's going on with me but I don't think I'll ever get it so that's what that is I have that condition I have a congenital sucrase insomnitis deficiency fun right and I think that's it so if you like this video or you guys want to see more health related things you can subscribe and like the video um possibly tutorial i might do like a this look i did today but as a tutorial sort of thing because i'm an e-girl no but like seriously <laughs> i will see you guys later